Amen. Thank you for having us. Um, thank you for being real. Um, thank you so much. Lord, we ask that you help us again and cause your counsel to come in simple, plain language as Jesus would have done if you were physically present teaching us. Let your word flow into us and upon us like rain, transmitting the spirit to effect the changes that are needed. We trust you this morning. Glorify yourself in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. So when you see a house, it has a foundation. When you see a tree, it has root. When you see a shoe, it has a sole. When you see things that are trends and patterns in the natural, there is a reason why it is so, and that reason is domiciled in the realm of the spirit. So we will make an attempt to improve our understanding of the realm and how it influences the natural, and how we can take advantage of the fact that our priesthood is superior to counteract things that have been orchestrated by the enemy. Uh, I trust that God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So yesterday I said to us that uh, there were people we attempted to use the anointing to help. And we found that we couldn't help them. The reason was because there were legal issues that were tied to the condition that they found themselves that we, we, we were not aware of, all right? And that's why in spiritual warfare, we cannot overemphasize the need for spiritual knowledge. You need to understand the legality. You need to know the basis of the authority that the agents of darkness have. Once you have that insight, we can reach into the treasures of the new covenant and take away the legitimacy that Satan has secured in that condition. That's what it means to engage in spiritual warfare. So for every insight that we draw about the realm of the spirit, we are going to find applications. The sound is wrong and the volume is wrong. It's supposed to be something like strings that is not fighting. Because you are taking me to a different place. That's not where I'm going. Come with me. Let's go to number two. So number one, we said that the spirit realm is legalistic. In order to establish the workings of a spirit being consistently, in a certain corridor, there must be a legal premise that uh, authenticates the presence of that spirit. So if you are a researcher, which I encourage that every one of us becomes, when you see consistent patterns, you see something that in this generation, this was the pattern, in this generation, this was the pattern. It's just suggestive that there is a legality that ties in a spirit into that matter. The moment you, you arrive at that by research, then you will need insight. The insight now gives you the context, gives you the basis, gives you the premise upon which that spirit secures authority to operate. And then we reach back into the treasures of the new covenant to undo that premise, and there's liberty. I don't want to give so many examples because there are so many people watching me online and maybe some of the people we minister to, they may not be comfortable 
if they start hearing their cases online. So I'm, I'm just trying to strike a balance, but I trust that God will help us. Okay, let us do John chapter 11. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. A woman came to, to me and said, Ah, now that you are back from your trip, I need to bring my daughter. She's about to get married. I said, okay, that's great. So she went and brought her daughter. And I told her that your daughter is dead. This lady is dead. She didn't believe me. I said, okay, let me prove to you that she's dead. So I laid hands on her three times. And she fell off. And the, this black part of the eyes went up and it was just white. And it, she was like that for 30 minutes. I said, this is the spirit of death. And I began to explain. She was still like that. I was explaining to her because I had insight. Hallelujah. I had insight. The moment I saw her, I had insight. So I saw the legality. I explained to her what is going on in her family. These are the things that are taking place. And if we remove that thing, she will, she will stand up. So the idea was that somewhere, maybe a day before her wedding or a day after her wedding, she would die. But there was no physical sign that suggested that she was in that condition. That's what happens when we lack insight. You'll be praying in tongues but praying amiss. When we do legislation, when we do spiritual business, it is on the strength of precision. So, today, I trust God to manage the time well, and then we'll do a practical. We'll do theory, we'll do practical. But we'll do more of that in the evening. God helping us in Jesus' name. Now, my diary is big, so I can't use my pad. So the man on the screen, you are my Bible. Give me John chapter 11, verse 50. John 11, 50. John 11. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Or give me my phone. Okay, let's start from 49. Let's start from 49. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all. Nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. This is a doctrine of necessity that Caiaphas, the high priest, had to bring to the Jewish ruling council concerning Jesus. And in the eyes of Caiaphas, it was better for Jesus to die than for the whole nation. Now, the principle that is suggestive in that statement is the principle of substitution. So the spirit realm is capable of substitution. Maybe, maybe someone is to die. Substitution can actually take place. Someone else can die in that person's place. And you will notice that it's the principle of substitution that is the wisdom behind our salvation. But I need to take you, tell you the implication of substitution. Now that our salvation was occasioned by the principle of substitution. Meanwhile, our God is a God of wisdom. Are you here? Yes, there are many ways, many principles he, he, he would have exploited to achieve our salvation. But... He chose substitution as the principle. I'd like you to know the implication of that choice on your life. You must have heard that, oh, this, this woman wants to die. I've seen it again and again, which is substituting people so that they can extend their lifespan. They, they did not invent that possibility. It, it is available in the realm of the spirit. They just take advantage of it much more than believers. All right, let us 
Let us do Bible study. Jesus died in your place. But on the records, he died as you. In spiritual accounting, it was not Jesus that died. You were the one that died. So he died as you. So you died. And what God did was that by an act of his authority, he included you in Christ Jesus. So that anything that happened to Christ Jesus happened to you. It's just like I take my pen and I put it in this diary. And I take the diary to Yola. The pen is going to be in the same place where the diary goes. So God exercised his authority and included us in Christ. So he was dealing with us while he dealt with Christ. Are you there now? So every experience, it will interest you to know as sweet as it sounds theologically that when he died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. When he rose, I rose. When he ascended, I also ascended. When he sat down, I'm also sitting down. It's a theological piece that is quite exciting. But you see, the scope of the believer's experience is tied to these realities that we became involved with on the account of God's sovereignty. Are you, are you, are you with me? If I notice you are not following, I will cut it. it. It might mean that you may need some time in the wilderness in order for you to discern the need for this investment. Now, stay with me. The scope, the scope, the syllabus of your Christian experience is tied to what God sovereignly brought you into. One of the things he brought you into is that is death. It means that there is a spiritual experience of death for every Christian. And that's why Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's an experience. The knowledge of God, are you there? The basis upon which you have an entitlement to know God is quite easy. It's because you are in custody of his life. That's not your life. It's his life that you became a partaker of. And one of the qualities that his life has is that it gives us the capacity to know him, to discern him, to apprehend him, to recognize him. It's just like no one teaches a dog how to bark. No one teaches a true believer to discern God. And that's why in this day of, of falsehood, um, I'm amazed. I'm amazed why falsehood still thrives in the body of Christ because God gave you an inherent discernment capacity. It is part of the seal with which he sealed you in the spirit. All right, so you, you, your possibility of knowing God is tied to the fact that you are a partaker of his life. That is not a human experience. That is an experience that you can have only because you are in alignment, you are participating in God. So if someone doesn't, is not born again, for instance, he cannot know God. Are you there? You know with me. There was a man that was an occultic man, but he began to masquerade as a pastor. All right? And he was giving people miracles and all of that. I mean, a lot of people were coming there. He could say every other thing. He could say your name. He could say, um, this is where you, you come from. He could say, meanwhile, we can also say those kind of things if we're under the influence of the anointing too. So, but he could say stuff, stuff like that. And, but the only thing he could not say uh, revelations about God because he's not born again. Do you understand what I'm talking about? In order for us to believe the supernatural ministry you carry, we must see a commensurate revelation, insight into God that you were not taught. If we cannot see that insight in your ministry and you have bogus manifestations 
without a commensurate dimension in the knowledge of God, you are fake. Because God will reveal himself to you through his word first before he will show you who he is in the spirit. Now, check, check, check those guys that were with Jesus. They were going to Emmaus. He, he appeared in a form and restrained them from discerning him. And then he was opening the scriptures, showing them himself in the scriptures. And when they now understood who he was according to the scriptures, it was after that that he now allowed them to discern that he was actually the one in the spirit. Be afraid of someone that is seeing things in the spirit and he cannot bring those things out from scripture. Someone that can tell you about you, but he cannot tell you about God. Because the, what we are querying is, is he alive in the spirit? Does he have the life of God? Because that's the only agency through which we can know God. I don't want to press that. Number two, the Bible says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection is the operating system of the Christian life. It is the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that is at work in your Christian life right now. So what God did is that he solved the greatest problem of man through the Holy Ghost, which is death. So the Holy Ghost that can solve the problem of death and bring someone back from the dead, he can solve. Poverty is a small issue for you. So the power that is at work in me is a power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It means nothing can defy it. If in your own life, it seems as though some things are defying the potency of that power, the problem is not with the power. The problem is with you. Then the Bible speaks about the fellowship of his sufferings because Jesus, in order for him to fulfill his mission had to submit to some form of suffering. And that was how he uttered our salvation. It means that while you are doing the things of God, you will go through sacrifices. I mean not that you are, you are a victim of you, you did something and that is wrong and Satan is dealing with it. That's not what I'm talking about. You On your path towards fulfilling destiny, there are inevitable sacrifices that you are going to be subjected to. Because the master himself uttered our salvation having that texture. Coming to church and thinking that because you are born again, you will not suffer. I'm telling you that even in your calling, in order for you to grow in your calling, in order for you to be consistent in your calling, there are sacrifices you must accept that this is my lot for life. Mm. I know you don't like what I'm saying. Mm. Do you know what it means when the, when the apostles say we'll give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer? It's just like someone that is keeping a shrine. He, they dedicate the person to the shrine. So he gives himself to the shrine. What he becomes is a product of his dedication to that spirit. What you become is a product of your dedication to prayer. You were given to prayer. So if prayer has not yet shaped you, you are not yet operating at your maximum capacity. When you give yourself to something, that thing will be the reason for your sacrifice. When you begin to pray, a time comes when God sucks you in little by little. It means he's asking you for more time. You are not with me? And just in case you have discovered a way of existing without prayer, you are a cheap prey for the devil. And it's not because God has lost his strength. It's just because you are not willing. You, where you are is a product of your willingness to journey. Because all of us have the same possibilities, have the same potentials in the grace of God. But many of us have not yet accepted that sacrifice is an inevitable part of our engagement. So a lot of people, a few among us, have accepted that long time ago. I no longer count how many days I fast in a year. I no longer count how many hours I pray. I used to count it before, 12 hours. I'll put the clock. 
and then I count 12 hours. This, okay, I was able to do 14 hours. Then I said, okay, let me see high, the highest I could do. I went for 18 hours huh? in tongues. When it became my lifestyle, there was no need to count. Yeah, so I just flew. I can pray for three days. Because I gave myself to it. So the fountain will begin to expand. The capacity will begin to expand. And God is in the business of expanding capacity. There are dimensions of spiritual things you can't move with, with, with insufficient capacity. You can't move that. And it's not God's fault. If I make you feel okay and you don't have a prayer life, I lie to you. Because there is no one in the Bible. You check the Bible. Somebody say, ah, this church is growing and they are not praying. Ah. You find out why it is growing. No? Because the prescription in the book of Acts is that they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in breaking of bread, in fellowship, and in prayers. If those guys have devised another formula, it is not the Holy Ghost that is driving that place. It's not the Holy Ghost. Because people can gather. I was there in, uh, in Manchester. Etihad Stadium. He was filled. Jesus was not in the center. So that you have some. doesn't mean it is the Lord. If it's going to be the Lord, you must follow the prescription. And you cannot take prayer out of that equation. You cannot take those basic things. You can't take them out. That's, what, that's the mechanical energy that drives church life. At any point in time, where there's a decline in those matters then another civilization will begin to build. You just, sin will just start flowing. Huh? Wicked men looking for how to keep pastor will begin to, they'll find a place con conducive. Put some prayer there. Ah. Put some prayer there. The witches will confess. Well, if there's no prayer, I assure you there are a lot of witches. Many things that you do, many decisions that you took was not with your clear mind. You were under influence. Uh, I've seen both sides of the coin. So I can tell you how, how, how it feels like. All right? There's also an experience of death, conformity to death, death to self, death to ambition. The Holy Spirit will be walking this thing. And that experience is available because you were brought into the operating system of Christ's administration. He's working out death on your ambition. He's working out debt, a debt protocol on your agenda. He's working out a debt protocol on your preferences that are not consistent. They are not in line, alignment with God's will for your life. He's looking for how to frustrate it. You are trying to package it together. Mm. So all of that is because of the context where we were brought into. Don't forget that the principle is the principle of substitution. So let's do 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. The realm allows for substitution. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him that died for them and rose again. This is the implication of substitution. The extent to which you will carry the authority of God, this is one of the scriptures that will determine the extent to which you are a carrier of authority. For instance, after you have received salvation, which is a product of substitution, if you now decide that you want to live your life according to your preferences, you're already violating the demands of substitution. See, anytime you live in violation, it means that you are exposed. Satan can hunt in your farm. Satan can plunder. Satan can influence. Because the moment you receive salvation, you are no longer your own. The one that died for you is the one that should call the shots as to what you should apply your, your life to do. Now, I... I was not a bad student while I was in the university. And my desire was to lecture. And I was a bit good in what I studied. All right, so. And um, before I left school, one of our professors was made 
deputy VC in another university. And he wanted to carry me along so that I would study under him. So I got the job, lecturing job. But I went to pray on the field in the night. And while I was praying, the Holy Spirit ministered to me that of all the things written concerning you in heaven, lecturing is not one of them. There's no one of them. And, and I like knowledge. And one of my desires of wanting to lecture is that I have a, a lot of cramming our ability. So I wanted to just cram the note and then come for lecture without note. Then I give them, it's something I can do, all right? I give them notes from my head, give them structures from my head, and lecture. Any course I'm doing, I can do it without note. So that was just what I wanted to achieve by lecture. <laughs> you know, when the flesh, may the flesh not be <laughs> your motivation for anything in life. So the Lord now said, in your archives, in your file, there's nothing written about you and lecturing. So I had to turn that offer. Now, the man saw I was smart. The man saw I could maybe become something in, the, in that world, but it was not written concerning me. In fact, God said through prophecy days later, after the Lord confronted me with that position, he said through prophecy days later, through a reliable um, prophetic voice, that... He will not allow me to do masters. I, I, I almost had a problem with the person that, <laughs> that prophesied that thing. And then, uh, so when, when I was posted to Benue and I was working at the depot in Benue, our members were influential people in one of the universities there. So they went and got, got their admission for me to do masters and all that. The moment I saw my name on the notice board, I lost my peace. I lost my peace not for one day, not for, for one month, and that's terrible. So I went and told that lecturer. The lecturer has, the lecturer's husband's elder brother was a senator at the time. So I don't know how they did it, but the school gave me my school fees back in check form. So I now gave her the check. That was how my peace came back. That's the reason why I'm not a, a doctor today. Because even though I have accepted that I will not lecture, I, I still won't. Let it be on record that I was a professor. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he died for you. The implication is that all of us that live now are indebted to him on the account of the principle of substitution. The only life I can live is a life that he prescribes. And if you are not living that prescription of life, there are, there, are, there are various realms where your authority will not be acknowledged. And I'm telling you this as a man that has been in the field for a long time. And I've seen in my city, I told you the other day when you came to see me, that the number of deaths for pastors in my city annually is something to think about. So it's not as if that their callings were not valid. It's not as if they were immoral people. When you are in the heart of spiritual warfare, these are the matters that will come up. These are the matters that we come. You might want to do like other people. You might want to behave like other people. But God has a prescription for you. And that prescription is law for you because of substitution. Because of substitution. So God has not called you to be creative in the sense of let's be innovative. He has just called you to submit to the script that you already wrote before you were formed in your mother's womb. And if you know nothing about why you are here on this side of heaven, 
It's a call to prayer and fasting. Many people want God to help them, want God to intervene for them. But these people are not actually living within the scope of the description of what God has created them to be. And, and because of substitution, that's a big matter. Jesus was a young man when he went to give his life on the cross. There were so many things he would have done. He would have chosen to die at 75 or 80. But he died at 33. And the Bible says he was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? The people that are recipients of his great benevolence are supposed to be living for him. When you live for him and Satan comes, I've heard reports from people. There was this guy. Demons used to come and beat him. Beat him in the night. Leave him gasping for life in the morning. That was his experience for a long time. So he now came. He came to church and I accepted him as my spiritual son. Then the demons, they came home, but they couldn't beat him again. It's okay. Is it not that you, because you are submitting to that man now? So the demons knew that submitting under a man that is in alignment with God provides covering. The demons were aware of it. So he said, no, you, you say, oh, no, I'm, I'm born again. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. And how powerful you are in the realm of the spirit is dependent on how compliant you are with God in living out his own dream through your life. That's how powerful you are. And all of this is because of substitution. So you can now understand in the chapter of spiritual warfare, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, he now comes to us and says, be strong in the Lord. What's the meaning of that? How can you be strong in the Lord? Meanwhile, in the Greek, it means take advantage of the Lord. And there are two, two instructions he gives us. He said, be strong in the Lord. Take advantage of the Lord. Take advantage of the power that is in his might. Hallelujah. So if I'm going to be strong in the Lord, then I must understand the implication of what the Lord has done for me. Because all those things they translate to currency in the realm of the spirit. Okay, let me show you currency. Um, I think we'll do it from Isaiah chapter 53. Then you see currency. Isaiah chapter 53. Quickly. Isaiah 53. Hallelujah. All right. It says, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He had no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He is despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smithing of God and afflicted. All right, so that's the currency page now, verse 5. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, currency. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes were healed. So everything he paid 
translates to spiritual concurrency that we can take advantage of. So if you are going to be strong in the Lord, you need to know the extent of payment. That strength is not in yourself. That strength is in what the Lord has already achieved because there is spiritual currency that is available in the realm of the spirit on the account of the payments. So you need to be up to date because when we do legislation, are you there with me? When we do legislation and we are insisting that Satan should leave, we use those items of currency. When we demand that people be healed, it's on the strength of the fact that the stripes have translated to currency. When we ask for tranquility and peace, it is because the chastisement guaranteed peace. There can't be turbulence in my space because I would take advantage of the currency. Hallelujah. So, being strong in the Lord talks about faith in what Jesus has accomplished. That's part of what we use to trade in the realm of the spirit. For instance, you'll find out, let's not go there, I don't have time for that. Okay? Being strong in the power that is in his mind. So you see, if we say you be strong in the Lord, we are referring to finished works that have produced currency. If we say be strong in the power that is in his might, we are referring to current works that the Holy Spirit is doing in me now. You can't win a battle just on finished works. No. No. The Holy Spirit will need to give you current wisdom on that matter. So, one aspect is finished works. The other aspect is current works of the Holy Spirit. He said, take advantage of it. It's just like when you are praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. So, we teach people how to pray in tongues. But we also teach people that the moment the Holy Spirit begins to initiate a protocol, maybe you are speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, and then instantly... The Holy Spirit in your spirit, man, begins to sing a song. Stop speaking in tongues. Take advantage of the power that is in his mind. That song is a vehicle. It's a means of transportation. It is designed to take you to another place, another pedestal. It is designed to give you access to another possibility. So as you are praying and praying, you are listening on what the Holy Spirit is pouring out into your vessel. And then the moment he begins to pour something out, you leave what you are doing and you hop on, on his vehicle. And then that vehicle will transport you to where the things you seek reside. Be strong. I know people that will be praying in tongues and then the Holy Spirit begins to move within their vessel. Even though they are discerning it, they believe that it is superior for them to remain praying in tongues. It means that you have denied the power that came, the vehicle that came to actualize your hopes. So a spiritual man is a man that knows when the vehicle of the Spirit of God switches on and he stops every other activity to allow the Holy Spirit to guide him. The reason why there's a prescription, be strong in the Lord, is still because of substitution. Because on the strength of substitution, you no longer have a life. Your life is dead. The reality that is left now is his life. And that's where your context is. That's where your strength must be drawn from. How many of us know if, when the Holy Ghost stands up, he's standing? He's standing in you. Do you know that experience? Because you have not yet explored what it means to be strong in the Lord. You live your life in the mundane from the strength of your intellect, your calculation. I assure you, even though you might be a great guy, you are living off your least potential. 
And it will interest you to know that if you are faced with a situation that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit, you will be no match. No match. Be strong in the law and in the power of his might. Do you know the experience of the Holy Spirit allowing you to see through him? Do you know when you are in transport, spiritual transport, do you know what, you know what that experience is? Do you know what it means when the Holy Spirit gives you capacity to discern personalities in the Spirit? You can have a discussion with an angel. Do you know what it means? You can, Joel, you and Joel can talk, have a discussion. You and Paul can have a discussion. Do you, do you know what it means? Do you know the experience? Do you know how it feels in the spirit? Now, how do you intend to get ahead of Satan when you are not abreast with the spiritual experiences of the strength into which you have been rooted? Be strong in the law. You will, you will see people like Zachariah in the book of Luke chapter 1, having a discussion with an angel. When last did you have a discussion? It will interest you to know that if you are born again and you've been in the Lord for a while, I can say that 90% um, of us in this place have had angelic encounters before. But the point is, you didn't know it was an encounter. Because you are not strong in the power that is in mind, is in his mind. You don't have access to the spiritual knowledge that will give you the confirmation of spiritual things so that you can know them for what they are. As long as you are limited in this dimension of education, you will be incompetent, incapacitated in very practical situations. I was preparing for this conference that we just finished. Pray, 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 pray. So, the number two man, my number two man, now calls me. He's the only him and my wife and my son, Philip. They are the only ones that can make me attend to them on that such. So we called. So I knew it was an emergency. I said, what is this? Why are you disturbing my life? Go and solve your problem. He said, sorry. This is our pastor. This is our younger pastor. His mom came to visit him so that she can attend the conference, and she's dying. I said, oh, my God. I jumped into my car. I went there. I saw our Bible school people were praying, praying on her, seriously. I was aware of the fact that if I joined the prayer, we'll pray till evening. What I needed was not the ability to pray. What I needed was the insight. So as they were praying, I was trying to find out what is going on in this place. Then I discovered that it was a family issue. I discovered that her sisters had access to spiritual power and they wanted to cut her off that day. Why that day? I don't know. I said, ah. I said, your sisters want you down. She said, she's aware of it. So I didn't go into the details. So I asked, is it, are you people dragging land? What is the problem? What? No, no, no need for that. Then the next insight is, okay, how do we, because that's word of knowledge. What I needed thereafter, after she confirmed that my word of knowledge was right, is word of wisdom. What is the, the people were still praying. <laughs> I didn't join them. Uh, then when the word of wisdom came, I had missed it. The prayer they were praying for since morning. In 20 minutes, we have stopped, we have ended that thing. Then I gave her a prophecy that in six hours, when you put your leg on the ground, it will, it will you'll be okay. So I entered the car again. I ran away. Now, 
if you come and join them praying like that, eh? that prayer that has, you don't, your senses, spiritual senses are not operational. That's what someone that is not strong in the Lord will do. So, since you are not strong in the Lord, you cannot, you don't understand the handle of the Holy Ghost. So, you, your prayer may not even be able to change anything. I ran back to my closet and continued my prayer. Continue my prayer. Continue my prayer. Hallelujah. Came back from a trip. Saw our pastors. Praying for someone that was that had a mental health challenge. And they were they've been praying. So I came there. I looked at them and I pitied them. Because if this, <laughs> if this is all you can do <laughs> in this circumstance, it is a proof that you are not strong in the Lord. The moment I entered there, I checked. I said, no. Before you can help her spiritually, take her to the hospital. So I gave the woman money. I said, take her. They injected her, she slept first day, slept second day, because she wasn't talking. Third day, she started talking. I said, okay, bring her back. Then we began to engage. Then she now told me the things she didn't tell any of them, because she wasn't talking. Then we trapped the spirit in a discussion. Not, no, in a discussion. So if you come, when you come, you will see one of the girls on the camera. That's the case. The demon has been arrested. Be strong in the law. It is substitution that made our strength to be in the law. Because the testimony of the Christian life on the basis of substitution is not change. Is exchange. It is only in substitution you can say, like Paul in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, it is no longer I that I, it is. So I draw my wisdom, I draw uh, my response to situations is not from me. I wait for him. I desire him. I desire. That's why you need to build intimacy with God. Are you there? Mm, you're not there. You're not there. I want us to do practicals today. So the lecture has ended. So we are in number two now. The reason why you need to build intimacy with God is because of the day of trouble. If you, if you have him as a friend, and you know to build intimacy, it takes effort. You wake up in the morning, you begin to talk to him. You pray in tongues, you pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues for like 45 minutes, one hour, your spirit opens. Right? And if you have not been praying for a long time, you will need two hours. Because your spirit eh, is sleeping. Just like Jesus slept in the boat, Jesus can sleep in your life. So you need like two hours. And in those two hours, your soul will be noisy. Say, ah, yo God, yo God, yo God, vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. Can you see La Montelli? You just remember that ah, you, you should send this person a text. Send the person a text. Send the text. Send the text. Send the text. Send all those all, all of that noise is inside there. And that's why if you want to get serious, sometimes you will need to give somebody your phone and then lock the let the person lock the door from outside. So that there's no hope of yielding to that noise. That noise is the barrier of the flesh. The flesh doesn't want you to experience life from the other side. Doesn't. Doesn't want you to experience life from the other side. And so when you cross that barrier, 
Then you enter into a quiet space. That quiet space, you pray in tongues for like one hour, for like two hours, it's quiet. There's no response. When you hit the third hour, then symbols will begin to appear. That's why strong men normally, minimum, they digest three hours of prayer a day. That's minimum. You don't have anything. You don't have any preaching. You don't have any. Just, just to live life. Three hours. You will invest in your spirit if you are going to make a mark in life. Life is not natural. If by, by your brain, by what you studied in Harvard, you, you become a billionaire, I'm assuring you that if you switch on your spirit, you will become a billionaire in, in a, a multi billionaire. In your flesh, you have your least potential, but in your spirit, you have your greatest potential. So I labor for intimacy so that when I come into a situation that needs a response, I, I talk to my friend. I say, how, I know how to, to, I know what to do to my heart. I know how to angulate it for me to hear him. So increase your volume now. My message has finished. We need to do practical. If you cannot call his hand in, you cannot do that now. You are not a strong man. If you cannot call him in now and he will respond to you, you have invested in the wrong thing. And you will never know until the day of trouble. That evil day that demons, that witches ganged up together against your destiny. That's the day you will know whether you're, you were investing in the right thing. Because the Bible says that he that falls in the day of adversity, adversity will come. Adversity is not necessarily bad. It is, it is a revealer. It means you are strong in the wrong thing. You are strong in gossip instead of prayer. You are strong in the knowledge that is in your soul instead of the knowledge that is in your spirit. I wanted to be a man of knowledge. It was later that Jesus now gave me insight. The reason why I didn't allow you to go into lecturing. I know how you like knowledge, but I wanted you to have the excellent knowledge. And I worship him for it till this day. If you can't call him and he responds to you, it means you don't have intimacy with him. You don't talk to him. Other things are more important to you than talking to him. I can take a walk and just discuss with him and just talk with him. And then he now begins to tell me, okay, that person you prayed for, that nothing happened. This is why. I will go back and write it down. Because I'm a researcher. I need to build a body of truth that I can use to instruct people. I said, the other one you prophesied on. And instead of the person waking up from that sick bed, the person died. Listen to me. If you can put away shame this morning, you will be helped. I said that because I see a woman with the issue of blood. You've been releasing blood. You've been releasing blood. You've been releasing blood. And God wants that fountain of blood to cease. But you see, I, I need to touch you. This one, I need to touch you. So, oh woman, if you are here, come. Make Jesus, your friend. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let that fountain dry up. Dry up. Yeah, in Jesus' name. When you call him, if he, if he doesn't respond, he doesn't know your voice. 
you've not yet acknowledged the fact that you are totally insufficient without his help. So you have other help boosters apart from him. So you are not strong in him. The greatest investment you can do for yourself is to build that intimacy with him. Hallelujah. I don't need to go to Harvard to make millions. All I need to do is, I'll just go and cry. Then he will show me one thing to invest in. That's how I, because I don't have time to struggle in the marketplace like other people. So he will just give me one insight. And I have not been able to recover from the wisdom that his voice brings. You don't need to ask me to follow the Lord. I have seen how <laughs> wonderful it is. This measured Christian life that you are doing, you are just convincing yourself that it's okay. It is only the people that are ready to dive into God that will see the fullness of his possibility. Oh my God. I see, I see someone in the spirit. I see it, 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 something like a beam, but this is a beam of darkness. And the Lord shows me that you've been having strange nightmares. In fact, two nights ago, you woke up from a nightmare. It was so real. It was when you woke up, you realized that it was not in the real world, it was. Where's that person? Two nights ago, you woke up from a nightmare. Come, it was so real, so real, so real. Do you know why those things happen? Do you have an idea? Now, so when we come for the lecture in the evening, I will show you other things about the realm and the way wise people pray. The way people that live long pray, there's a way they pray. There's a code they know. So that things do not just befall them by accident. Now, so this is what I will do. Because there's one of you I'm trying to decode, since you are more than one now. So I'll touch you like this. Touch you like this. I'll touch you like this. I will touch you like this. I will touch you like this. Okay? Okay. Then I, I will do it again. I'll touch you like this again. Touch you like this. 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 And this. All right. Now, my hand, even though I've removed it, my hand is still on one of them. I've removed my hand. This is my hand. But my hand is still on one of them. And you will know in a moment which one. Father, show me that one upon whose head my hand still remains. So that's the lady I'm looking for. Now, are you there with me? Are you following me? You are not following me. This is practical. Follow me. Follow me. Now, this lady that is on the floor... There is a spirit that was worshipped in their family. And that spirit is haunting them, even though they are born again, they are Christians now. As we go in the lecture, you will find out that inheritance is a critical matter. Jesus said, I've called you to reap where you have not sown. I've called you to straw where you have not bestowed labor. The only way that is possible is by inheritance. Are you there? So inheritance is a, is a possibility in the spirit. We'll, we'll talk about inheritance for long if we have the time. So the same way you have, are you there with me? The same way now we have access to the heritage that God was able to secure in Abraham. There are also negative inheritances that are available. There are liabilities and you need to shut them up. Don't just claim that now that you are born again, it doesn't exist. Ah. It means you are not wise. It means that you 
believe in the finished works of Jesus, but you don't believe in the current works of the Holy Spirit. Now, one guy was into charms and all of that. And in order for him to fortify himself, they had to dig up his sitting room, remove the tile, break the concrete, enter the ground, and plant something, and they restored it. So when he gave his life to Christ, his pastor told him, you were born again. That thing, he said, I have, you know, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. All things are passed. You are in custody of the devil's state. Okay, do you want, okay, stay with me. Are you there? Yes, um, I hope you know the moment you give your life to Christ, holiness is God's nature. And God is in. So why is it that people that are born again still commit immorality? Are you yes. ask yourself? The reason is because they were in league with something that defiled. If we can stay, huh? are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That thing that they touched has the ability to defile. They stayed in that arena. That was why it was possible. So if I stay away from what can defile and I'm pressing into God, and you will see that my desire for such things will even dry up. The reason why it will dry up is because it's not sustained in Christ. Christ doesn't feed it. It's not sustained. So it's those inheritances that were responsible for the attacks that came to us whenever we get, got to the age of 21. It stopped with me because I dealt with it. My younger sisters are free. So now we want to shift this sister. I scope a lame, sekiato. Resco fentele. The lamos cabrisco falabria tababo shekande. Uh, do you know what you do for me? Shake me. So that I can release some power on your hand. All right, so put your hand. Speak in tongues. Then shoot, shoot. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we cut off this open door and we shut it. We shut it. We shut it. Access to the canvas of their minds are hereby shut in the name of Jesus. All right. So when I touch this one, I see that you have received an arrow that you are not aware of. Father, in the name of Jesus, okay, you will help me, you will help me. Put your hand here. Pray in tongues, pray in the spirit. The arrow will come up. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we destroy this yoke. We remove her. We remove her from the reach of this evil spirit bringing delay around her life taking favor away from her in the name of Jesus we break the yoke right now and we proclaim upon her blessings 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 and grace In Jesus' name. Now listen. Listen. So I was waiting for this angel to come. So there are normally two of them, but I can only sense the presence of one. The Holy Spirit will introduce you to angelic people, angelic personalities. Oh my God. So this angel is, is anointing a lady in the congregation. Just watch it. He's anointing a lady. It's anointing a lady. 
It's anointing the lady and it's coming strong. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger on the lady. It's anointing the lady. It's anointing. It's anointing the lady. The angel came with oil. Came, oh my God. There is, there is a, a lady. She, okay, so God is giving you the gift of prophecy. Yeah, the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. He's giving you the gift of prophecy. Gift of prophecy. Gift of prophecy. In the name of Jesus. The hand of God will be strong on you. The hand of God will be strong on you. It will be strong on you. Be strong on you. It will be strong. Because it's anointing people. It's pouring that oil. Pouring that oil. It's pouring that oil. It's so very heleboko. It's so very heleboko. My compala.